Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Mixing it up, this is going to be Chobo League round of eight, finally. <laughs> Not a PvP. Which I am extremely, I'm just, I'm extremely excited to cast this just for that reason alone. Not to say that PvP is bad to cast, it's just, I wanted some variety, you know? Variety is the spice of life. Upper right hand corner we have Hoff as the green Protoss, bottom left hand corner. We have Agistol as the hot pink Zerg. This is going to be on Polypoid. This is the round of eight, and this is a best of three. So five games at max, just so you guys are aware. And so just so you guys know where I'm going to go from here. And I think I might upload two games a day just to speed things through a little bit because I've got a backlog of a lot of games. And I feel like if I just let it go one day at a time with the uploads, it might be a bit. So I'll try to do two at a time until we catch up to Chobo League, and then we'll see where we're going from there. I'll let Twitch... It's funny because it's like I don't know the Twitch people are pushing for it. Anyway, speaking of Twitch people, shout out to Karth, who's very patient and has been pretty much a regular here with the emojis only. I appreciate his patience on stream. Hoff is setting up, which for it looks like a fast expand. Is he going to go Forge or Gateway first? Gateway has been more popular these days. Gateway. Mostly because it has been forcing... Zerg have had a tendency more towards the uh, 973 meta. The Protoss response has been the gateway opener in particular, um, rather than Forge first. I'm wondering if that was the case prior to this shift in meta. It might have been um, altogether. We see a... I think that was a 9 pool. 10 pool, something close. Was it an over pool? No overlord. So, going to produce initial Zerglings to deal with this. This seems to be the new settled meta, meta at this level, which is gateway, initial zealot, try to force those Zerglings out. Maybe get a Forge or a Nexus, depending on how many Zerglings are produced and how successful that harass and scouting information and things past that. Um, try to delay that hatchery from there, and then it's kind of settled in. I almost feel like this matchup is still in flux, and the benefit of that flux recently has been more to Protoss favor. Although you wouldn't think so, looking at the upper end of Ghostly. Nice little clever maneuver from Agistil hiding that drone as that probe came in. He had its sight on it with that Overlord, that probe sneaking across. Uh, might try to trail, and this is actually very clever as well. So he's moving that drone as though that's the one building the hatchery. Um, it's going for the scout to try to draw that probe down while those Zerglings were being built. To provide, well, might have been a little bit of time, well, probably wouldn't have been <laughs> enough time to get through. So just pushing out. So that drone is going to be able to get the scout. This is going to give a little bit of an advantage to Hoff because he knows that his opponent, first of all, opened a pool opener. He's already got a good look at the initial couple of Zerglings. And it's actually, okay, we are seeing the full six. So that's the other thing that's been, I've seen at least in some of the streams recently, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's just game-wide or not, but I've seen a lot of players, yeah, opt for more Zerglings initially, sending out actually this Zergling Scout to apply more pressure on this front door. We do see two Zealots staying at home, getting that Nexus up. This is a wide open choke, and we don't see much of a Sim City here to create a blockade. And a third hatchery very rapidly from Agistal. Wow! Uh, this I have not seen. This is very greedy. And honestly, very risky. The Zergling making its way forward. He's going to have to be very, very clever with the Zerglings because it's three Zealots already. So, and he needs to get this probe killed because this is, I mean, this is a fairly big indicator. Uh, I mean, three, whatever. I'll say that three hatch play is pretty common or was common in the prior era. It almost feels like things are moving more towards that. But usually when you saw three hatch play, it was in base three hatch play. And, Hoff doing a great job of sneaking those probes around. It almost feels like it's, you know, back to 2008, which is great because that was when I was in the meta, minus the gateway first opening. We do see a forge being produced on the front door. Assimilator is up, three probes just now getting into it. And more Zerglings being produced. We got a full complement of eight, and this probe's still staying alive with no Zergling speed. And really what we've seen is more, I think this has been a constant generally, period is that Protoss, although they have gone Corsair here and there for that initial scout, Cybernetics Core building in the background, we've seen more of this sort of shenanigans. Early Zealot pressure on your Zerg opponent to try to force that early Zergling and keep their economy a little bit more staggered. The trick is, it's really kind of an interesting Razor, and I like it because it's kind of been a Razor-thin matchup in that regard between both sides, is you produce this many Zealots, you provoke a Zergling response, you need to make sure that your Zealots don't die or you have cannons or something else to basically stay alive. You can see Agistil starting to move out to engage this. He will get overwhelmed by these forces. This probe wandering up does in fact find this hatchery exposed. And now Agistil in a bit of trouble because he's got a lot of territory to cover to try to defend. He's in the middle of a tech switch. He's only got, I don't know that he has enough Zerglings to counter this. He's not putting down a Sutton colony. He's instead, he's got this Hydralis den up, hasn't produced any additional Hyd Hydralis to defend this. This is 
plenty of zealots to take care of this number of zerglings, depending on attack location. So he's walking into that natural expansion, looking for an engagement point, is drawing off the drone line, and I like what he's doing here. He's got enough zealots to to provide a threat, so he's kind of pushing in, forcing some things to pull off, now re-engaging with good concavity. Drones pulling off the line, try to defend this, and this is going to force a lot of zerglings to be built on Agis' part. And you can see all the zealots except for one survive, and that was the one that the drones were attacking. The drones pulling off that natural expansion, trying to provide some defense. This pro, or sorry, a single zealot actually also clearing up a lot of damage there at that third. So Hoff off to a big early lead. Some more Zerglings being produced. Drone, more drones floating off. Is that most of the drones? That's a significant amount of drones off the main. So Agisil getting caught with his pants down, just not having enough defense there. Another Zealot getting cleaned up. Some Zerglings, another round of Zerglings finally cleaning up these Zealots at the natural expansion, but not before there was a significant amount of kills. Agisil still sitting at 15 drones, and there's still two Zealots pounding away at this hatchery to the north. An Overlord wandering in, at the very least, to go ahead and get that scouting information. It also might die to Corsair, which isn't going to put Agistol in the red, but it's just that much... And actually, that Overlord also exposed. But it's just that much more damage to Agistol's economy. Agistol looking in bad shape. These two Zerglings are not going to cut it. Hatchery looks like it's going to survive, because this is enough Zerglings. But more Zealot pu pushing out for Hoff, so he's kind of hitting from both directions, using these two cans to provide some home-based defense, just in case... Ag well, Agistol probably will want to go all-in all this up just produced a huge round of zerglings and attacked that front door so those zealots cleaned up another zealot against four zerglings if these zerglings are on top of it they should be able to take care of that zealot trying to wander through there is a hydralisk finally to try to engage this and the drones once again getting disrupted at that natural expansion so agisil in the red because he's lost both these well kept that overlord alive lost that overlord that was near his main uh bit of a missed opportunity there that hatchery down to 46 health. Just 46 health. So I think I missed another bit. Was there a self-attack? I don't feel like it was that low, or maybe I missed a zealot. And now Agistol doing that thing I was talking about, getting all sorts of forces to try to go in for that counterattack. This is, again, that kind of that razor-thin margin I was talking about. You produce the zealots, you get the harassed on you inevitably end up losing those zealots just because you force your opponent to build a lot of those units. But then, even though you're ahead overall, you need to worry about that counterattack of a lot of units. Hoff with two Zealots trying to get a little bit of damage to that Hydralisk while it doesn't have the speed upgrade. Zergling speed being upgraded, two additional Hydralisk being produced as well. Inside the base, we do have two additional gateways for units to produce. Citadel of Dune is worrying on that leg speed and that... Mm, zealots doing themselves no favors with these Hydralisks. Getting wiped out on the front without really getting a lot accomplished. One Zergling getting killed, honestly. And that gateway is probably sacrificed. A, d a bunch of cannons being plopped down for Hoff. Another Overlord getting killed by this Corsair. It has two kills. And another, looks like another Corsair finally getting cleaned up. Well, getting pushed back, not cleaned up by those Hydralisks. So Agistil now has a degree of map control. And he's getting free Zealot kills, it feels like. These Zealots just keep wandering out, which is not helping Hoff out. So despite Hoff's excellent harassment towards the early part of the game, he's still in a commanding position. He's got those 43 pros, but he doesn't have a standing army. And needs additional gateways. Needs something to kind of push this back out. He does have the Templar Archives now up. Let's see if he can get, uh, I don't know, DT out here? He does have air control, at the very least. There's plenty of scouting information. Nice and city on the front door here of Agistil's base, Evolution Chamber and Hatchery. This 12 o'clock base is now working for him again. These overlords continue to be assailed by this Corsair. That Corsair needs to be very careful. That gateway is now down. You can see just a large army from Agistil on his front door now diving forward. Only a handful of zealots, and I don't think that High Templar has any, doesn't have the energy for Psystorm, and I don't think Psystorm's researched yet. The Dark Templar is having trouble getting to the front, which might provide some backup, but three, can or three cannons down. Plus the gateway and the Hydralisks are backing off with that Dark Templar on the front. I think the Corsair, so there's still Corsair in the main that looks like it's just been patrolling back and forth. That other Corsair has died to that Hydralisks while all of that action was happening. And Ad is still swinging back into this. So he's low on the drone count. Hoff, I, feel, I still feel like it's his game to lose. He just needs to keep producing the units, get some Psy Storm upgraded, something along those lines. I, that Templar Archive is still silent getting a lot of gateways up. I almost feel like that should have happened a little while ago. This hatchery is... This is, I think, going to be the key point here. This hatchery is still sitting at 104 health. If Hoff can get any sort of army fielded and force an engagement against his Zerg opponent and just Psy Storm, just obliterate them with Psy Storm, he, I think, will end up being in a good position. Right now, he's getting that somewhere around here. Where is it? There. Robotics facility. Cannons being worked on that front door again. Psystorm still not there. 
Only two cannons left. One High Templar getting wiped out. The Zealots finally making their way down. I don't, I don't see any Dark Templar. I think, did I miss? I missed a Dark Templar in the main. Dark Templar with three kills in the main. So it's going to work there on Agistil's economy. He's down to 19 probes. Overlord, oh, wow, now walking in, but the Overlord is wandering away, which is not going to help because these Hydralisks are therefore going to be exposed. That's allowing that Dark Templar to have a little bit more time to wander out to that corner. Now that Overlord, that should be it for that Dark Templar, but he's done his job, done more disruption of Agistil's economy. Now here's the thing. Hoff has been continually producing probes. He's at 47 probes, but he either needs to take a third or deny an additional base to his opponent. Looks like he's waiting for, I assume, an observatory somewhere around here with this robotics facility. No, he's going shuttle. Interesting. So he's going to go some storm drops, it looks like. Uh, I, I'm almost wondering if he was waiting for lurker tech. He's at, he's honestly at risk of getting lurker contained or just generally contained right now just because of the smaller army he has on the ground. He does have level one weapons. That is going to give him the overall weapon upgrade advantage. He does have a significant amount of zealots with speed. And right now this is... Honestly, with a decent engagement point, he might be able to overwhelm these Hydralisks. But right now, Agistil has been able to freely mine here. Uh, he's got decent drone saturation at his main and his natural. And he's basically mining at three bases where you want to be. Oh, sneaking up. Good size storm on those Hydralisks. Zealot's eating kind of the latter end of that. And I don't think the Hydralisks got anything for that. Shuttle. Archon getting a little bit out of control. Shuttle. Uh, does have a High Templar in there to, again, provide some additional storm. And honestly, with even that one Zealot, if he gets to that, oh, if he goes to that 1 o'clock location, he might be able to take that hatchery down just through sheer pummeling. Two sunken colonies here, three sunken colonies here, so maybe even that drop would be ill-advised. Hoff, in the meantime, moving out, clearing out those Hydralisks on the front. Now Agis still in a bit of trouble. He does not have, because he's had so many, dr he hasn't been able to saturate his drone count. He hasn't got much of a standing army. He's sitting at 45 supply to Hoff's 115. And only has a handful of Hydralisks, honestly, to defend everything. He's relying basically on static defense to try to stay in this match. Hoff has done everything he's needed to do, really, to be in a commanding position at this stage of the match. I don't think these three sunken colonies, four sunken colonies now, are going to cut it. Especially with web level 1 weapons and all of these zealots. Peeling in, he didn't even need this shuttle. And honestly, he can just... I would ignore the sunken colonies, just focus on that hatchery and walk the way back out. One getting dropped to the main is going to try to disrupt that drone trying to plant right there. And drones fleeing, Hydralis trying to replace the location. I don't think that's enough of Hydralis force, particularly with these High Templar here. Although these High Templar might get caught out of position. Good storm! Catching some of the Zelts himself. But peeling it. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this could be the difference in this match, actually. Although, no, I, I still feel like Hoff... Here's the thing. Hoff has 102 supply, but like 50 of that supply is in probes. 50 of that supply is in probes. And he is getting that Nexus up. So his army is still about the same size as, as Agistil's. So it's not like... Okay, yeah. he's Agistil's still going to call it right there. Lost all the High Templar, still had it, mostly because Agistol ended up losing this 1 o'clock base. I missed this. It looks like there's a drone drop. Oof, not my best commentary. Uh, peeled all of these drones, and that dropped him back down to 21, knowing that he ended up losing his third, knowing that uh, Hoff was sitting on two bases and about to take his third very comfortably. Hoff ends up winning the game, and it really did, I think he did most of what he needed to do throughout that game. My only... I feel a little bit rusty in PvZ. Hopefully that will <laughs> improve as time goes on. But yeah, Agistil really either needed to do a contain or he needed to do a break. He did neither. Ended up losing that 1 o'clock base. And also, I gotta say, Hoff did a fantastic job of continuing to apply that pressure and never let Agistil get that drone count up and get those bases saturated or get a large standing army. Really playing it well altogether. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Links for listening. We will move on to Game 2 between Hoff and Agistil.